Hello everybody, Yannick Chauvin here once again. And uh, this is a continuation of the tutorial that I put down uh, on my blog a few days back on the SB800s. Um, if you haven't read it, I invite you to click uh, on the link just above this video uh, so that you can go through the steps that I took to take that photo. Now this in sort of like a part two, we're going to be looking at the slight post-processing I did to get the, the final image. Um, not much has been done. Um, as you can see on the screen right now, um, this is uh, uh, the uh, final image straight out of the camera. And it's perfect that way as well. Um, but uh, I just like to uh, boost it up a little bit and bring out some detail. So that's what we're going to be doing. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is crop the image because we don't want the flashes uh, in the image itself. And so we will select our crop tool, which is right here. And we're going to crop out the flashes. All right, now I'm going to be looking for a square-ish type of composition. And we want the windmill to be kind of in the middle for this one. And that looks about right. So I'll double click, and we have our cropped image. So that's uh, that's part one. Now I'll double click on the hand to get uh, the image a bit bigger. Now the next thing I did was to um, bring out some detail in the uh, ground, the foreground here, and also here in the shadow areas of the windmill. So to do that, I selected my dodge tool. I made sure that I had a nice big soft brush. You can check it here. Make sure your hardness is at zero. And select a size here. And the next thing I did was made sure that it was at mid-tones and my exposure between 10 and 20%. So 15% is good. So just by clicking and going in here, getting some details in here as well. And that looks good. Let's look at the before and after. Before and after. Brings out some detail. Perfect. So that's simple. Next thing we're going to do is burn. So it's at the same place where the dodge tool is. Just hold down your mouse button and select the burn tool. Now what we'll be burning is the sky. Uh, and why am I burning the sky? That's a really good question. Of course, it's a question of personal taste, but also I want some focus to be on the windmill. Now, if you uh, vignette, in a way, uh, the image, so vignetting means darkening around the edges, uh, it focuses your eye to the, to the center of the image. So that's what I'm going to be doing, but doing it naturally uh, by burning the clouds. So as you can see here, the clouds are already dark. Uh, and oh, just to go through the things again. Again, it's a soft brush, mid tones, and I bring down my exposure between five and ten percent um, because burning can be quite aggressive sometimes. So we want to do it in steps. All right, and we go all the way around. Try to follow the contour of the clouds going in, and not just a straight line down. You can do that a little bit too, but try to focus on the the lines of the clouds. like so. And going in. Up here too. Going down. And you can make this as dramatic, as dark as you want, or as light as you want. Now, of course, you can also use the dodging and burning technique that I showed in my previous um, tutorial on non-destructive dodging and burning. And you can do that as well. But I'm doing it the traditional way here. And that looks about right. And that's what I did. Let's look at it before and after. Before and after. So it, it brings out the drama in the sky and I like that. All right, now the last thing that I did um, was to reduce the, uh, the, the warmth 
here on, on the windmill. I thought it was just a little too orange for my taste. So all I did was I went into Image, Adjustments, Hue and Saturation. Now, of course, you don't want to uh, uh, use the master because it will desaturate the, all the colors in your image. And that's not what we want to do. It could. It could be nice, but that's not what I want to do. What I want to go uh, do is go into the reds or the yellows. It doesn't matter because we're, we're, we're working on orange. And here you have the scale here. We're just going to move this slider down to make sure that it does get all the orange in. You see the, the range here? And that's what we want. Now we can desaturate. And as you can see, only the orange gets desaturated. Now looking at this, it uh, looks about right. So I'm at minus 13 saturation. I can look at before and after. And I still want to keep the warmth there because I want the contrast with the, the cool sky. But it was just a little too orange for my taste. And click OK. And there you have it. Just save your image after that, and you're done. Hope you enjoyed this, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.